sometimes you hook two, three of these fish and you want to stretch out straight through their buoy lines and you call them over and like, hey, take this angler and go and catch that fish and, and that fish is yours, you know? Gotcha. Um, so like the day we caught 22, I, it's really 21, you could see it because I, I put one of our anglers off on their boats and they went and catch that one. <laughs> <laughs> so got it. Gotcha. Yeah, no, for sure. And how did it start out? Like what was the origin story? Too much alcohol. Really? Okay. Because <laughs> if God wanted us to have five glass boats, he would have given us five glass trees. It's it's for fishermen. It's not for taking the wife and the wife's friends. It's, I think that it's a really, really pretty bit. And then there was a blur that went by and ended up in the cockpit as yeah. far as if I can remember uh-huh. correctly. <laughs> Welcome back, State of Sport Fishing Podcast. I'm Nick Rulo. I'm joined with me, my co-host, Anthony Pino, with Hooked Optics and Captain of the Blood Money. Today, our guest is Michael DeFritas out of Trinidad. He runs a boat called the Magic Lady. He just recently had some really epic fishing. Um, we're looking forward to hearing about it. Thanks for joining us, Mike. How are you doing? Uh, I'm great. How are you guys doing? Good, man. Good. Thanks for joining us such short notice. Uh, yeah, man. Just tell us, you know. Tell us where you're from and a little bit about how you uh, got into it. Uh, I'm from Trinidad. I'm born here and grew up fishing. You know, I, like most, I started with my dad. Um, and as I got a little older, I started fishing with a close group of friends. Uh, but we travel up the islands fishing this, the, all these billfish tournaments that we have in the Southern Caribbean. Uh, we would fish Tobago, Grenada, St. Lucia, Barbados for, for most of it. Um, that's where we learned and got introduced to, to billfish fishing. We don't have much bill fish in Trinidad. Uh, most of the fishing we do down here are for kingfish, dolphin, and our top one fishery is also insane. How come there's that much of a billfish fishery there? Uh, it's, it stays pretty shallow for quite a, for about 50 or 60 miles out. You, you would stay like around four, 400 feet, 300 feet. And we are pretty oh, wow. close to all, all the river runoffs from Venezuela. So all water is real brackish. You know, it's, it's, it's dark color. You don't get that blue water down by us at all. Ah, gotcha. That'll do it. So tell us about the the Magic Lady program. How long you've been you've been on that? Uh, I've been with them for six years now. Um, owner is really cool. Uh, we're really close. Um, I got introduced to his first boat, which was a forty five Carbo Express. Uh, we fished on that boat for about two years, and then he got a sixty Viking, which we're doing four years on that boat. Uh, it's also based out of Trinidad, so whenever we leave, we leave from Trinidad, and we will go up. We'll always travel up the island. So what he tries to do is one week every month. And according to the time of year, uh, we'll decide on where we fish, you know. Uh, Grenada, Tobago would be from like January to, to maybe late May. And uh, later on in the summer, coming close to the Christmas, we'd like to travel up even more north, you know, like we did St. Thomas and DR uh, two years ago. And, and this year, we just decided to stay in St. Lucia. Was there... Uh, go ahead, Go ahead, Nick. No, go ahead. Was there any like specific? Did you already know about that fishing in St. Lucia? Uh, we had an idea, you know. We always went to St. Lucia's tournaments. That was just about the only week out of the year we would go and fish there. And we've always had crazy reports. Um, fishing was always really good every time we went. So we, I always wanted to spend some time there. And now, uh, working on Magic Lady, I we had the opportunity where we could go there and and, and really see what the place has, you know. How's the infrastructure there? How's the marina? Uh, the marina is great. Uh, the main marina, which we stay in, is called Rodney Bay Marina. Uh, big IGI marina. And the manager is a really close friend. His name is Sean Devoe. Um, He set us up pretty good today. Um, it was pretty easy to get the fishing license. He did all of that for us. Um, easy to get fuel. Easy power, power to your boats and, and water as well. And how uh, how far is it? You said it was fad fishing. How far from the marina to the fads? Uh, there are fads all around the island. Uh, there are fads just west of that marina, six, seven miles. Uh, fishing isn't as good. A lot of the charter boats would spend time there just because it's close and they do like four-hour trips. Uh, the fads that we got lucky on and, and most of the time has the most amount of, amount of fish is on the top, uh, the channel between St. Vincent and St. Lucia. And it's a good pull from Rodney Bay. It's about, I would say, about 35 miles. Oh wow! It's a good yeah, it's a good hour and a half run. Um, on the last trip, we actually stayed south of the island on a, on a mooring uh, near a place called Paradise Hotel, just under the Pitons. It was a really nice place. 
uh, the owner stayed on land and we stayed on the boat just on the morning. It was pretty cool. Saved us a lot of time running. So how far from that mooring to that to those fads? Uh, it, it was about 45 minutes run. It was about, I would say, just about 20 miles. And you said so, that was between between St. Lucia and St. Vincent? Correct. Uh, yeah, we yeah. fishing on the southeast side of St. Lucia. Gotcha. Do you need, does the weather need to be good? Because, I mean, it's, it's yeah, fucking uh, well, I've been uh, from I've been from to Trinidad to DR and I think that's the worst channel I've experienced. That channel is, is really tough. It just gets really rough. Uh, we gotcha. kind of kind of watch the forecast on when we're making our trips and try to pick the best week more than follow the moon. You know, try to see when the wind is low and the swell is low, and that's when we will go. And you've you've you fished that area before, or is this this, this is the first time? No, I fished that area in the past. Um, gotcha. Yes, I, I definitely, and I had great fishing in the past as well. Just not for a long period of time. You would only fish it for one week out of the year. And Rob, are, that, are those fish the same size as like DR fish, or they're a little bigger? Uh I I would say the average fish is about a hundred pounds more than DR. Um, I think it's like closer to St. Thomas size fish. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. uh, you do you do get your hundred pound fish, but uh, you, you get a lot of three, four hundred pound size fish as well. And if you're really lucky, you will get a really nice one. You know? And how is the gra grass bad at all there? Oh, but it's always bad down south there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that last trip, last trip, we were blessed. Uh, uh, we got a good ease, you know, with that a little bit. No bother or dredging stayed in the water for most of the time. So, I mean, it was great. So, yeah. are most of the, the island fisheries down there, Michael? I mean, I know Grenada is not really a, a fad fishery, but like up up north there above above that, I mean, you hear about those, a lot of those islands having having fads that the, the government puts out, right? Yeah, uh, recently Barbados has done a great job. Um, the government put down eight or nine of, if you see how big these fads are, and, and they've been doing really well. Um, St. Lucia's been tough because, as I said, these commercial guys put out these fads, so you don't really get the numbers for the fads. Um, the first week we were there in St. Lucia, we spent time searching for them, you know. They just you. had your had a radar on looking for these boats running up and down and it took me five or six days just to find a couple of fads that we needed to fish by and grenada and tobago is not really it's not a fad fishery and i hope i hope it it never becomes one grenada has yeah. great great fishing in the wild and so does tobago what is what is the tobago fishing like uh it's really different um you fish these fish in really shallow in like three four hundred feet for most of the time um it's really affected by by green water because it's so close to Trinidad, it's about sixty miles. So mm -hmm. you gotta watch it. You gotta watch your color charts, your temperature charts, and and, and make a good decision on when to go. You do get, I would say, on a on a great week, you get like three or four shots at a blue, at blue mile in a day uh, with a couple of sailfish. A lot of them are a lot of them are small, just shy of hundred pounds. But sometimes you see a really good one there. You know, they have a lot of big fish there and. With a week of fishing, you might see one or two, and it's it's going to be huge. Wow. Gotcha. Do, do, now, do you fish at Tobago? Where 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 in relation to where do you stay, and where where in relation to where you stay do you fish? Okay, okay there's no marinas or anything in Tobago. We gotta stay at stay uh, on Amphok. Um, yeah, the main bay we stay in is called Charlotteville. It's the most the northwestern side of the island. Okay. Uh, it's a sheltered, real neat little bay, and they have all your necessities on land. They, could, they have little things you could go and get, a, a pretty all right restaurant, but no fuel, no water. You've got to make sure your water maker is working, and you can only fish as much days as you have fuel. How's the, and then, so how's the fishery there at Grenada? Uh, Grenada is probably one of our favorites. Um, it, it has the best of everything. Not really blue marlin. Uh, they have a great little fish fishery. A lot more sailfish than blue marlin. You do get your odd white marlin as well. Um, they have a reef south, uh, southwest of it, called the Reindeer Shoals, which has great wow fishing. I mean, you could catch as many as you want sometimes. Wow. Uh, our average day is like 10 to 15. And, and then they have these pile of birds with big yellow fin tuna, which are everywhere. You could sometimes catch as many tuna as you want. And, and a small one is somewhere around 100 pounds. Wow. Grenada, Grenada has the best of everything, you know. Got to be some and, big, big blue marlins around there too. Yeah, they around do, they the do. tunas. Yeah, I mean, not, not, not a lot. You, you could get like a shot a day with with great fish in there. We, you know. Wow, I'm just looking on the map now. So, yeah, yeah they, 
there has a the marina there is really good. Like uh, Grenada? Yeah, they have Port Louis and then they have the yacht club. Um, they have everything you need. Real easy to get fuel, water, every, everything there is, is set up pretty good for, for someone to come and fish there. And what about, so, and then what about, you know, the, working your way up there, the, the, the rest of those islands? How's that fishery? Uh, we've never really spent time there. Uh, from Grenada, our next stop is normally St. Lucia. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, I, I was actually watching some structures running back home this trip on I was like, I, I got to fish some of these places. Some of these places I've never been fished before. Yeah, like the Grenadines or something? Okay, correct. All those chains of islands, especially on the east side, I mean, the, the, the structure. It's got to be, gotta be pretty yeah, good, huh? It's got to be pretty good. Nobody nobody has ever really ventured there much. Is there wow. any real commercial commercial pressure there, Michael, or any in any, any of these places? I got to imagine around Trinidad, uh, it can be uh, pretty bad. Of course. I mean, we have a lot of... Uh, we have fleets of longliners and fish out of Trinidad. The majority of them fish on the east side of uh, Trinidad, like five, six hundred miles out. So it's, there's nowhere around the chain of islands going north. I got you. Uh, you, you do get commercial guys leaving Grenada and, and, and the Grenadines, and they would set some longlines all throughout those islands, just targeting yellowfin tuna, which obviously they'll catch everything else too. Yep. Yeah. But they're not like. I mean, they're not like sure. industrial industrial operations. No, no, like no, no, no. It's not that. It's not that big. So I, I don't think they. I don't think that they do much damage on the islands. Yeah, and you yeah. said Barbados is can be good too. Barbados can be really good. Uh, I think the the fishery kind of aligns with Tobago. Uh, they do have some smaller fish. They, they sometimes sometimes fishing there is really good. Uh, we haven't spent a lot of time there. I know we'll be back. Um, we, we did one trip there this year. Fishing was not so good. The water was a bit green. Uh, we did catch like three or four fish for the week with a couple of seals. And I don't know. I, I like to go back there again because they have really good fads down there now. Um, and then just, just tell us about the, I mean, what was it? I, I just caught on. I just caught on the billfish group was sharing some, some videos or some reports from you guys and, just tell us about that stress of fishing you had there, Michael, in, huh. in St. Lucia. So yeah, your, be- mean, was... your best day was what, 20? Best, best day the last day was 22 with, yeah, 22 with 22 with a steel fish, a spare fish. Yeah, 22 with a spare fish and a steel fish. And uh, 22 yeah. for what? Uh, 29 bites. Wow. wow. Yeah. Now, do you, you said you, was this the trip you said you had to, you had to look around for a couple of days and find the fads before you could, before uh, you started so... really getting them? So we set up there at the beginning, of, at the end of September, sorry. And um, that, that first trip was really slow. We, we, we caught like seven or eight fish for the week. And yeah, I spent most of the days just searching. It took me a couple of days to find a couple of fads and then a couple of days to realize what fads were hot and, and, and what was on, um, what fads I should really spend time with, spend time by. Uh, and then the second trip was really good. You know, we are, uh, I think we released 33 or 34 blues the second trip. First day out, we released uh, eight blues and two stables. Um, and the second trip, we were catching them all in a while. Not sometimes we would just reach the fads in the afternoon. There's a there's a good piece of structure about four miles inside of the fads. I would put my lines down there, and you, you know we started to mark fish and catch fish there, and all over the place. I mean, it was great. Every day, we had between five or six blues with a couple of seals, and we ended that week I think with thirty three blues, and I kind of expected that same fishing on the third trip, one, but the third trip was just, I mean, it was crazy. The how far trip, apart How far apart are the fads? Like, are you able to work a few fads or you're working ma- like one or two fads? No, um, they're like two or three fads, like two miles apart, two which miles. is pretty nice. So you could kind of troll between each other and you would catch fish on the way to another fad and it was really yeah. good. But on the last trip, uh, two of the fads in the channel uh, broke away, I'm guessing, because they had a really rough week before we went. And we, and it was only down to one fad. So on the last trip, it only had one fad there. I put my lines down on the same structure, which I normally start, and I do not get a bite until I reached pretty close to the fad. We caught a white marlin on the way. And when we reached the fad, um, they had like all the commercial boats were on one fad. They had like 12 or 13 of these boats. And at least half of them were harpooning marlin or pulling them over the boat, you know? <laughs> I mean, Mar- Marlin was jumping everywhere, so oh, we wow. knew they were in, we knew they were in the area. And the first first um, first round around the file, I mean, I marked like a dozen fish. 
mark a group of four, a group of three, um, some pairs, and you just pick the closest group and head it, you know? And that's how crazy it went for, for the entire day. The first day we released 20 fish. Gotcha. Um, all right. And then, and this is going on, all that commercial fishing is going on while you're catching all these fish? Yeah, these guys are here. They set, uh, they set these buoy lines with live tuners that they catch on the pad. So if there's a dozen of these commercial boats, they have 40 of these lines down around the pad. So it's like driving <laughs> around. <Kiwa. laughs> Do you ever get hung up with those guys? Of course. Um, our fish run into their buoys constantly where we have to go and, you know, gap the buoys and pass it around our line. And I mean, it's a mess. Kind of hook two and three of these fish around with it. It's, <laughs> it's really a challenge. <laughs> and how, how is your, like, relationship with those guys? Like, are you talking to them, uh, helping each other or? No, they they don't like us there at all. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, they 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 really didn't like us there. I mean, I mean, we gave them a couple of fish to be honest, yeah. uh, just to just to make the make peace. And sometimes you hook two, three of these fish, and you want to stretch out straight through their buoy lines, and you call them over and like, hey, take this angler and go and catch that fish, and and that fish is yours, you know. Gotcha. Um, so like the day we caught twenty two, I. It's really 21, you could see, because I, I put one of our anglers off on their boats and they went and catch that one. <laughs> <laughs> so got it. Yeah, yeah no, for sure. And how, sure. how many of those how many of those guys take in a day? I would say um, sometimes you they have no they have no ice boxes or anything to, to put these fish in. So they would throw two or three in their boats and head in. Uh, I got to imagine the, the live tunas under a buoy is pretty effective. It's actually, it, it is, but not as good as you think. Um, it's crazy because you 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 mark these fish right up on their buoys. You know you know that they're there and they're probably just circling around that that bit wow. because it, it doesn't feel alive for long. You know they, yeah. they hook it up, they hook it on these big lines and big hooks and they don't they have no momentum forward. So by the time they put them in, they're already dead. Yeah, I got you. But yeah, but yeah, they do get bites as well. Wow, wild! It's, That's it's crazy. Yes. <laughs> How'd you fish there? Did you teaser fish or just? Uh, yeah, fish? I, I mean, pretty similar to what you guys would fish in, I would say, in DR. I, I fished two thirties in my riggers and two bridge teasers, two dredges. Um, second trip, we were using thirties on our flat, but on the last trip, I, I went to fifties. Uh, not really for the drag, but just for the capacity of line on those bigger reels. You know, you got to, some of these fish, you have to stretch one out quite a bit to get to the other one and then go back for the next, you know. You got you. So you had a lot of multiples. Uh, a lot, a lot, a lot of doubles. A, a lot of, I, I think we had two or three triples as well. Damn. You said these are things that are like two to 300 pounds typically? Yeah, um, I would say 200 pounds is a good average. A lot of fish in that 200 pound range. Um, I mean, not a lot over 300, but some push in there. Yeah. Um, we did see, I would say about four or five, we called 400 pounds and, uh, and quite a bit of 100 pound fish as well. We, on the first day, we got the big pitch to one, which we called 650, 700 bones, wow. uh, which, which was crazy. I mean, I didn't expect to see that size fish around that pad. It was really, it was really special. And when you say you're marking them, you got a sonar or is that just on your transducer? <laughs> well, no, we actually installed the sonar this year. Oh. Uh, this, this time we installed the sonar. So it was my first time using it in St. Lucia. I mean, it, I mean that, that, that thing is crazy, as you guys would know. <laughs> yeah, that is badass. I mean, yeah, I'm just about learning it. I've never been... With a with a captain or, or someone that knows it very well, it's just um, I've been asking guys for advice and they've been sending me their settings and I'm just playing with it from there. And I mean, I'm definitely seeing Marlin, you know. Yeah, yeah. it's easy to yeah. it's easy to figure it out when you're in a target rich environment, man. Well, I, well look, luckily we have a place like that to, to, to help me. <laughs> you know? You're probably one of the few boats in your area that have one, huh? I think we're just about the only one right now. And, <laughs> yeah. and I hopefully we take advantage of that. <laughs> yeah, for sure, dude. Don't tell those commercial guys. Oh no, they must be wondering what the hell we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Damn, that's is there any bycatch while that's going on, or it's just I mean uh, definitely no, fish. A couple Actually, sales. None none at all besides a couple of seal fish. I, I think one day we got like six seal fish bites and we caught three. And you do you you would catch a seal fish every day or, or get a seal fish bite every day. Uh, if you look, you would see a white marlin. They, they do have a fair amount of spearfish as well. Every time wow. in St. Lucia, I would catch the odd spearfish. Wow. So the, the chance of slams are, are also pretty good. What was that, last week or two weeks ago when all this was going on? Uh, coming up to the full moon. That was last week. 
yeah. last week. That, last week, yeah. The last day we fished, I believe, was the day of the moon or, or, or the day before the moon. Yeah. And how long, when did the boat get to St. Lucia? Uh, we reached at the end of September. So we fished a week in September. We fished a week at the end of October and then the beginning of December. I got you. So you caught, that, you said you caught like a handful of fish that first trip and then progressively yeah, caught, got better? Yeah, we caught like seven or eight fish the first trip. And then the second trip, we caught just over 30, 30 blues with some tails. And this last trip here, we had 106 blues and six tails and three whites and a spear fish. Nice. And, and you would always. Was that? Seven, seven days fishing. And you would always run down to that southern end and, and anchor there and then fish? No, I uh, that. We recently just tried that because we, we knew that we were going to fish south of the island for most of it. Um, sometimes when we were there, we would try the north and we try try up on the west, closer to Rodney Bay Marina. But because of the, the second trip, fishing in the south was so good, we just kind of got contact on where to stay down. So just to save us some fuel, some time running, more time fishing, uh, it actually worked out pretty good. Um, and then, like, a, I guess with the weather, like, you got to, can you can you do that even when it's choppy? I mean, was it abnormally calm there, or was it just kind of normal weather there that that uh, last week? No, the first couple of days were choppy. I um I would say like about I one point eight to two meters and blowing at like twenty knots. So it's okay. it's 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 miserable, but just but more yeah typical. more than fish yeah more than fishable. You know, it, typical Caribbean <laughs> weather winter yeah, weather, right? Yeah, ex exactly, but. A lot of the times you would see it blowing closer to 30 knots in that time, man. I mean, <laughs> you, re you really don't want to go there and fish when it's like that. It's, it's I can really imagine. Yeah, it's, it's, is there a lot of current ri current ripping through there? Uh, that channel is like, like a ripper. Uh, sometimes wow. you're, tro you're trolling and, and you're going 10 knots. And when you, when you put your bow into the tide, you're doing five knots. <laughs> wow. Yeah, sometimes sometimes the fads would go completely underwater. They would, they would sink and sometimes they won't pop up for days. Wow. Sometimes you, you you just mark them and all the buoys are underwater. And what are those? What do those fads consist of? Like, where? How do you compare them to the DR fad? Uh these guys love to put a big blue tarpaulin or or something on their buoy. So you see, like a big blue, a big blue mass on the on the first buoy. I don't know what they put below that, but it, it's a long chain of buoys. So it's not like one buoy, like what you see in DR. It's a main big buoy and. You might see like 20 buoys tailing it, I'm guessing, just because of how hard the current gets, you know, so that it would stay afloat so these commercial guys could find it when they come out. Um, even on the last buoy, they would put a flag uh, so you could help, just just help find it. Yeah, gotcha. How deep of the water is you, are you fishing there? Uh, there's, those fads were in like 12, 1300 feet. I got you. Uh, they do have fads in about five or six miles outside of that, which... Is like in four or five thousand feet of water, but for some reason, uh, the majority of blue marlin like to stay in the shallow. When you go on those fads in the deep, it's just yellow fin too. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, it's crazy. I think I think the the fishing there is just about as good as anywhere else. Um, next day, we like to set up and spend some time there. We would like to put on some fads of our own just to help with the pressure of these commercial boats and help them out as well. Obviously, you know. The more fads they get to fish, it'll help them out and it'll help us out as well. Yeah, yeah. That's when awesome. you is you said Tobago, Tobago, you, you don't have fads and in, in, in Grenada they don't have fads, right? They just fish. I mean, you, yeah, you get the odd fad from some of the local guys, but it, it the marlin for some reason don't don't stay on those, don't stay or stick on them as well as bait. They don't really hold the they, they don't really create this structure like up the islands for whatever reason. I don't know. I don't know if it's because of the amount of bait in that area is just all over the place. Like, I don't know. They just don't care that our father's is down. Tobago is yeah. full of full of bait. There's tuna everywhere. And that's what, what creates that fishery. You know, it, it's the bait. It's not really the structure. The amount of bait that settles on that, that side of the island. Mm -hmm. you, what do you, when you fish down there, you fish like a, like a, four four hundred foot drop off or something like that yeah it's it, the deepest a lot of the time you would go it's like 600 feet i got you um you turn back around 600 it, it will get to like 1200 feet if you keep going out but the, the fish just love the shallow you know i spent a lot of time in three four hundred feet i mean i, I really see a lot of white marlins there this seems like white marlin type territory there actually no not in um not in Tobago, we, we hardly ever get it. I've caught one or two for, the, for my lifetime there, and 
more so in Grenada. You know, Grenada, I think it's fishery kind of aligns with that of Venezuela. Uh-huh. Uh, so you do get a fair amount of white marlin sometimes, a lot of sea fish. Have you fished off Venezuela at all? At all. I mean, it's it's only six or seven miles from us, and I've never been. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I fed up, heard all these stories and great reports from there. I mean, I really hope it was in a better situation where we could all go, you know. It would be yeah, easy yeah. for us. It would be easy for us to venture over there and come to DR. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're right there. Yeah, for sure. So then what's uh, you said you, you got a tournament coming up uh in January? Uh yeah, there's a the most popular tournament in in, in the Southern Caribbean, I think it's Grenada most participation. Um it's at the end of January. So I think we might do that next, or we might end back up in St. Lucia. It's all it's all up to, to the owner and what he wants to do. Do you think that fishing that fishery will still be good in, in January in I, St. Lucia? I think so. I, I definitely think so. I mean, we talked to some of these local fishermen after we gave them a fish or two and we, we were asking them questions like, how, how often do you guys fish for these fish? And there's nothing else for them to catch. These guys target blue marlin and yellowfin tuna as their livelihood. And they said, they said, Mike, once these fads are down, they have fish around. We fish for them wow. year round. So, wow. I mean, I, I think January, February, March would be great as well. And how many ter- how many tournaments will you guys typically do uh we normally do we normally start with grenada in january uh i mean the tournaments died off pretty much because of the pandemic but before that they had two tobago tournaments they had a grenada tournament and then they had martinique and saint lucia tournaments in september october um and then we would start with grenada again in january so about five or six tournaments for the year uh barbados is also in there but it's always pretty close to the, to the tobago tournament so we always pick tobago over Barbados. michael fisher. have you ever have you ever fished obvious island out there to the west or have you ever heard of anybody going out there i guess it's a little way way more to the northwest but it sits 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 to the west of the the chain of is islands it, there is it avis avis is, yeah, mean, yeah, is yeah 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 yep avis oh. island yeah <laughs> yeah i had a I had a good friend called Glenn Charlotte. He works with uh, double header charters in St. Thomas. And every time he leaves Trinidad, he always ventures there, goes there and fish for a little bit, and then goes straight to St. Thomas. And as great wow and yellowfin tuna fishing, he's never fished billfish there. He always tries to fill up the boat with meat and, and, and head home. But I'm sure, I'm sure that place in the middle of nowhere has great fishing. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's just a bank, right? It's just yeah, a bank. It, yeah. I mean, I, I passed it on the way to the to come into DR, I, it's I mean it's like a it's like a beach. You could barely see it. You could easily drive over it if you're not paying attention. Wow, interesting. I've always I, there's this one. I don't know if it was the IGFA. I think it was the IGFA where they they did a thing on on satellite tags, and they showed all where where they all went, right. and they and they all like all of these all, all of these fish were like intersected at some at like all at the same time south of that uh, avis island and i oh uh, wow that, yeah that, that's i don't i mean there looks to be some mountains and stuff there it's in the middle of nowhere and i'm sure the with the weather you guys typically good it would be difficult to get there but yeah i mean yeah that's, that's a little out of the way um it's also owned by venezuela oh, oh, I gotcha. really? yeah it, it is and i think they have a a, a base or an army base that, that that stays on that island uh, so yeah, yeah, it's a place I really don't want to be around. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, when you're catching, when you're seeing 30, 30 blue marlins just south of Saint Vincent or Saint Lucia, you're, what's yeah. the point, you know? No, no, for sure. I just sure. never, I never really talked to anybody in in that in your region, so I was just kind yeah, of. They're, they're really not much boats fishing in this area. We just about the the only private boat that has a a, a busy fishing schedule. Um, there are a couple of recently recent boats that are now starting off as well. Uh, hopefully, I have some company soon. Uh, company will always help us out to catch to, to do a little bit better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what? I, I think we might have went over this, but what's your yearly schedule typically? Um, I, the owner's name is Frank Somuti. I, I call him Frank. What what Frank likes to do? He um, he would like to do a week, one week every month. Uh-huh. Uh, that's a goal you know what sometimes we miss a month or two and he tries to make it up in other months but um let, yeah we do i would say 70 days for the year and what consists of uh 
do you do you Who's bounce on? like what's your rot- hold on what's your rotation like from from place to place like uh okay you, so we like sorry, starting so in, like starting in january like if, if you go through the whole month what do you typically uh january february march we normally spend time in uh in grenada so we would do a, a week there every month um and then april to let's say about june we would spend time in tobago so we would fish like three or four times out of the year in Grenada and maybe the same amount of times in Tobago. And summer is normally the time where I pull up the boats and get get whatever work needs to be done. So I would take June and the July to pull it up and get all my stuff checked and back in the water for August. And August, September, we try to come up on the North Drop or, or try to come up in, by, in Dominican Republic and and then back down in St. Lucia for October, November, December. That that that's that's what we we aim aim to do. Pretty cool schedule. And how many guys typically on on the boat like make up your your crew? I have normally like two or three mates. Uh, um, the the owner and sometimes like two or three of his friends would come as well. So it, it, like between five to ten of us normally fish together. And does he? When you guys go on a trip, does he ride on the boat or he flies to where you're you're going? If, it depends on where we go. If we do in Grenada and Tobago, which is just about sixty miles or eighty mile run, he would come on. He would come on us, come with us one time because we would run for two hours and then start fishing one time. If it's up the islands like like St. Lucia or further, he would fly and meet and meet us up there, and he would fly home and I would just bring the boat back home. And I'm trying to encourage him to. To do one of these trips back home from St. Lucia and fish some of these areas which have not been fished before on the way home, you know. I, I would like to I would like to just go in all these spots where I think looks pretty good and just give it a go. Yeah, I'm sure you'll find something. For sure. And where do you like if you're going to St. Lucia, where do like from your your home port in Trinidad and if you're going to St. Lucia, what's your like what's your route? Where are you stopping to get fuel or you're just chugging? I just I, I think I one straight run. It takes me about seven hours. Yeah, it's only shoot. It's, it's only two hundred and it's the same distance between Saint Thomas and DR. It's about just over two hundred miles. But if you needed to get fuel somewhere, where's a where would be a good place for you to get fuel? Oh, there are plenty of places. All up the Grenadines have little marinas and, and places to get fuel. Grenada, you could stop and get fuel in Grenada as well. I mean, yeah, there, there are tons. Uh, really easy to get fuel in one of those islands. To come up with any further, you know. And I'm guessing none of those do any of those little islands have like any sort of coast guard or anything that bother you when you're traveling through. No, uh, not often. We be most bother people. The coast guard in Trinidad is who stops us the most coming back home. <laughs> just uh, where you guys have been, you've been out for so long, and why have you been there that long? And other than that, of the islands, nobody really bothers us at all. You know, you wild stuff. Such an interesting <laughs> area, man. Yeah, uh, it, 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 it really is different. Have you fished anywhere else yourself, Michael? Or? Um, in the past, I I don't know if you know the the offshore world championships that 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 we win while fishing tournaments in the south. Eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, yeah. Uh, to Costa Rica. Um, I, so I I won a couple of tournaments before, and I I've done Cabo San Lucas before. Okay. I think that's where it was before. I've done I did, went there for two two years, and then. I've done Costa Rica like three or four times. Um, so yeah, I've been around and this year. Uh, the owner actually took us to Cape Verde, which was that was a great experience. Yeah, How we, was that? We went to Cape. Ah, it was crazy. Uh, the size of fish there is a Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you guys catch some big ones? Yeah, we caught we, not much. We caught about five or six and we missed a couple of nice ones. Um, I think fishing was now starting to die off, but I mean, we had a, we had a great time and just to see those islands and, and experience that fishery is it, it, it's crazy. That's cool, man. Nice did, little did, operation. Yeah. Did you did any of those places kind of change change anything for your program the way way you guys fish? Because I mean, you've been with your with your with your boss for a long time. Like, did going to any of those places were like, wow, we we could be doing this back home. Uh, I mean, I wish we had that size of fish consistently. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, definitely fish for that. I would definitely fish for that size of fish a, a bit differently than what we do at home. I mean, you get to pull these lures and, and, and have a good time. And I mean, 
we try to stay away from the JF the Rome just because we have a lot of uh, small sail fish and small marlin and the hookup is really isn't that good as I opposed to the, the dead bait fishing. Um we try to stay away from the from the cockpit teasers as well because I don't know, I for some reason I'm not very lucky with it. I, I just kind of try to keep it simple. I uh, we did use that in Cape Verde and it worked well, but these fish are just they're different animals and they're really big and focused on what they want. <laughs> teasing them and getting them off their pitch were a lot easier than these little fish at all. Badass, dude. Hopefully yeah, we'll make no. it down there one day. Yeah. That's, oh, sure. it's, a, it's a long way from Ocean City. <laughs> uh, <laughs> my my boss, he did ask, he was like, man, what do you think about Grenada? I was like, it sounds like a cool place. And I was like, it's 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 a long ways away. You could go, shoot, you could almost get to the canal by then, you know? Yeah, I mean, from, from in, Florida. Oh, for sure. I think coming from as high north as you guys, I think don't don't pass St. Lucia. <laughs> yeah. Don't pa- don't pass St. Lucia to come to Grenada. I think your first stop has got to be St. Lucia. Gotcha. And you said that there's a there's a nice IGY marina there. Yes, there is in Rodney Bay, and the manager of the marina is a real close friend. So if you guys are ever interested, I have his contact, and I can help you guys get there. You know. Well, there, and you said there's not. I mean, I know that there's a lot of big yachts that frequent that area but there's no no other 60 foot vikings running around or running no, that they, area no not really they, they, <laughs> they, they, i mean they have a busy ch- charter schedule they're, they're two main companies that, that run a several boats out of there they're all smaller boats and they do four hour trips just on the west coast you know yeah um, and i mean they keep pretty busy but to say there's a boat there fishing blue marlin there isn't anyone wow it's that's insane. I mean, and you know what's really crazy to me, Nick, is that nobody really, nobody really ventures down there from. You know, you don't hear of any big, big American. I know. I know. Um, I know. Tim Richardson spent some time um in Saint Lucia. Yeah, he caught like a. Uh, yeah, he, like, he had a he had a day with like ten or eleven fish yeah. a, a couple of years ago. I think I can't remember the name of the boat. I want to believe it was Revenge. It was. I'm uh, not sure. Yeah, yeah, but it's a Garlington boat. Yeah, um, yeah. He, had, he had great fishing, and sometimes he loves spending time here. I think a couple of years ago, he came here and he did some charters out, out of St. Lucia as well, um, and, had, and had great fishing. So he obviously knows the fishery here as well. Yeah, it's, it's just strange that, you know, well, some people don't... because everyone used to go to Venezuela, which is past all that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, with all these fads in St. Lucia, fishing in the wild is difficult. For whatever reason, I don't know. I mean, yeah. you would get the odd bites. Uh, like, a good day, you could get three or four bites in a while, but the, the fans have really made a difference. I guess just yeah. like DR, right? I mean, I don't know how DR was just before the fads, how the fishing was. I, I'm sure they had fish around, but I'm sure the fads and, and enhanced the fishing quite a bit. Yeah, I think I think you're right on that. I definitely yeah. don't I definitely don't remember, like, there's some of the crazy numbers coming from the DR like they've had the last, you know, six, eight years yeah, from before I mean, that. For sure. That's what encouraged us to come up there because the numbers were like, it's like you're bound to catch 10 room all in the end of the day if you go. <laughs> yeah. How old are you, Michael? Uh, 34. 34. Yeah. Nice. So you're our age. Um, and Barbados, you said you, you said the government puts out, out fads there? Yeah, they have a big program down there. Um, they have eight, eight or nine fads down already, and I think they they want to put down close to twenty fads all around the yeah. island. And these are like big ones that like a ship puts out. Yeah, they're they're huge. If you hit those things with your boat, you're gonna mash up your boat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're really big. Um, and yes, they have a lot of bait on them. They did put a couple of these fads really close to the island. I found, you know, just a mile or two miles off. I, I uh-huh. think when they when they start to put down more and start to venture off show a bit um i think they're going to be really good i, yeah, I think fishing is really good and it's have a you, nice place have you fished there before uh yes um not, not often i think just twice before um we did a trip there this year it wasn't that good um i think we went in april which i don't think is the best time i think that fishery kind of aligns with with st lucia where like the end of the year let's say november to February, March, I think it's, it's just about the correct time, you know. I mean, it's pretty much, you know, it's the furthest, yeah, it's east, the furthest island, east, east chain of island, you know. So, yeah, if you keep yeah. going east from there, you're fucking, yeah, Cape Verde. 
and I hear correct. <laughs> yep. Yep. And have you, do you ever see anything? I mean, any anything crazy between the islands? Like, I mean, I'm sure you see the tunas all the time. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, you see the tunas for, I don't know why, they, they, they stick around Grenada. Um, you don't really see them much up the, up the islands. But then again, I, I keep close to these islands when I'm heading north. I don't ever venture off into the deep. I got you. Do you have to? Do you have to run when you run up, like Grenada? Do you you do you have to run on the west side because it's protected, or do you keep on? Are, are you... if, um, actually, when I'm when I'm going up the islands um, up to Saint Lucia, I, I run on the east side just because it it, it 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 makes it run a lot shorter. It's about forty five minutes shorter. Um, if it's really rough, the east coast could get gnarly, and yes, I stay on the west west coast of everything just to get a little break under the islands so when you're traveling and it, it's pretty i mean it's a pretty steady 15 20 knot east breeze down there right oh that's rough as hell <laughs> <laughs> i mean if you got a when you get a nice cross then you feel blessed you feel blessed you know you you, you yeah. got a sea keeper it's an amazing feeling no i don't we do not how long how uh, long till you get one of those things i don't know um hopefully very soon <laughs> Well, you better have a dealer, sea seakeeper dealer down there. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I know a couple of boats with them down there. Yeah, I, I, they do give a lot. They do give a lot of trouble. I mean, I I don't have much experience with it, but I know guys have been complaining about their sea keeper a lot down there. Well, it's like one of those things. Like once you have it, and, and then it stops working, you're like, "Fuck, man! I don't want to do. I don't want to go yeah. fishing without this thing." Uh, 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 oh no, for sure. I guess you're. You feel a lot better at the end of the day when you oh, yeah. push that thing on. Yeah. When you take a shower, you're not uh, bouncing off the glass. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. And you said you I said that know. that first trip, that St. Lucia trip, was the first time that you would use the the, the sonar, or you'd had it before that? Yeah. No, it's no, it's actually the first trip I I had it installed in August. The intern had it. I got you. Uh, and yeah, September was the first time I ever used it. Um, I just I asked several captains for their settings and I just kind of played with it from there. And I mean, yeah, I'm sure I have, I got a lot to live with it, you know. Good. I mean, I figured out I figured out the the easy parts. Um, it, it I it, I mean, it is doable by yourself upstairs. I I've heard that you need a guy helping you out with it, and I yeah. I mean I I'm I'm working I'm working with it pretty alright so far. Have you yeah. run over a fad yet? Uh, no, but pretty close. <laughs> 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 Especially all these buoy lines that these commercial guys talk about. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sometimes I part really close. <laughs> yeah, that's that's tough yeah. with those things around. Oh, for sure, for sure. I mean, it's it's really weird concentrating on a screen now and not looking back. At it. I mean, it's it, it's it's a different uh, it's a different feeling. It's kind of a, I don't know, like people are like, oh, you're not looking back anymore. I'm like, yeah, but when you're looking back, you know, something's coming. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Right, you know, and my crew is watching me like I'm like I'm going crazy. You know, I'm telling them that they're coming up on two and three fish and they're like, how the hell, how do you know what's going on? <laughs> yeah. Like You got to you got to come and see what the thing looks like, you know? Yeah. My good mate, I don't know, I mates in DR, he was he was dialed in because he knew when I was looking back, he knew that I had seen something you know so he oh, would for sure i mean I, I i tell my mates that all the time i was like i'm so jealous of you guys when i was on deck there nobody tell me anything was coming you know yeah yeah yeah. you get smoked <laughs> on the flat line and you're like yeah, the captain's yeah, like yeah. captain's like what yeah. the hell and you're like what yeah. the hell yeah. Yeah. why the hell didn't you see that one coming now you get smoked on the flat line and everybody's looking at you be like what <laughs> my guys no, have gotten sure. my guys have gotten very spoiled they're like i mean the couple times i, I don't know Probably about seventy percent of the time, I'm like, "There's, we're gonna see one," and then now the ones that like, if we get a blind bite, if it's a teaser bite, it's all good because they're like they're all focused behind us. But man, when they when we get like a a blind like a flat line bite pops out of the clip or something, they're like, "What the hell? Where'd that oh, come from?" Sure. <laughs> how, how how is it with uh getting blind bites with you guys? Does it still happen pretty often or or not often? Or how how is it going with you guys? Um, you want to go, Anthony? Oh, I, yeah, I mean, I up here and <laughs> I, I feel like I I had one day where my last my last day fishing at Ocean City this year. I'd, shoot, we we caught four out of five blues, and they were all three hundred plus. And 
and uh, I only marked two out of the five of them. You know, so so I mean, they're still you know, and sometimes they do come, but I mean, man, when it's calm and you know you're in a good spot, you can, you know, it when it when it's choppy, I feel like you're gonna you're gonna see less of them, or you're not gonna be as sure. You're not, you're not going to be as sure. You'll be like, huh, you know, like we might, you might not look down and be like, hey guys, we're going to get a bite. It's going to be on the left side. Sometimes I just keep my mouth shut and then I'm like, oh, that was, it was a fish, you know? But I mean, I will say the, the blind bites, the blind bites that we do get, I don't, I typically don't see, you know, like. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it happened to me a bit. Um, Every day was different. Sometimes every single bite we got i i saw it you, you know you saw it you saw it coming on mm-hmm. and then some some days you you get two or three blind bites that you, you know you don't you don't have an idea any idea or when you're like um, when you're when you're following a fish and then you get the a, another bite of when you're following <laughs> a fish you know oh yeah that 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 happens so well i mean yeah the last the last day of, the last day fishing in lucio i mean there was too much fish around and just heading in one direction, you were coming up on four or five fish on. Sometimes you would tease up a hundred pound fish on your bridge teaser, and then there's a three, four hundred pound we eat in your pitch bait. <laughs> yeah, it was it was crazy. Yeah, that's fun. Well, what about you, Nick? Do you I mean do you feel like you see a lot? Yeah, I mean, definitely see, feel like I I see do you, miss, do you miss the ones that you don't mark or do you, you looking back still? Um no, I mean I feel like I mark majority of them now, you know. Yeah. Um because I'm pretty much, you know, I force myself to look at the sonar as much as sometimes I want to look back, you know? Yeah. Um, no, for sure. But yeah, no, you do occasionally, you know, you do get a blind bite where, you know, you're even when you're zoned in on the sonar, you still get a fish that, you know, comes out of nowhere, you know? And I'm always yeah. curious, I'm always curious to know, if, you know, if it came like from straight behind the spread or just straight from the bottom or something, yeah. you know? I feel like sometimes you'll see them like I've seen. I've seen some that I didn't mark that they're just like ripping across the surface. Uh, you, that, you, you know, your, your beam is below, below yeah, where that, 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 that happened to me a couple of times. You see them coming far on the outside. And I don't think you could mark those, you know? Yeah. I mean, you'd have to be tilted up higher. You'd be getting a lot of surface interference and you'd, yeah. you basically have to be looking for that thing, you know? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm not marking anything like about 12 or 13 degrees. Everything. I got to be a little deeper than that. Really? Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, I don't know if it's how it's set up in the boat or I don't know. I think that well, I think down there, I I mean, I don't I don't mark a fish on my bottom machine or my sonar typically deeper than 150 feet uh, all the way up here, but in the DR I was marking fish at, at 250 and stuff like that, which would, would right. make sense, you know. Cause they don't like here what happens is the wa- the warm water pushes over the cold water and the fish are all up in the in the warm water and they don't go typically go below, but where you got down there, it's all warm water, you know? Yeah. So. No, yeah. yeah. It's a, it's quite incredible where these fish come up when sometimes, you know, you mark them on the sauna and you put them on your, hey, buddy, thanks. Um, yeah, sorry about that. Yeah. And no, I just, some of these fish in St. Lucia, you're marking them on your up and down and, and 280 feet, 300 feet and you still get the bite out of them. You know? Wow. Holy crap. I don't even put my I mean, bottom machine down that far. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, yeah, I had it's, a couple it's bites as you're in DR were deep, like 300, where I'm like, you're like, ah, he's not going to come up. And you run him but, over, yeah. and then you look back, and then whoosh, you're like, oh, <laughs> yeah. fucking came up. It's the same thing up on them. It, it, it's quite incredible when they do that. Yeah. I do remember what before on the Temptress, before we had the sonar, I remember, and I, was, I used to fish in the tower a lot just because I like to see him coming and I yeah. remember, I remember a fish. I was just, it was like a twelve noon, you know, perfect visibility, and I remember watching like probably a three hundred pounder. I mean, just I felt like he came from a mile straight behind, like my whitewash. <laughs> like I like looking back, I'm like, oh, there's one coming, and they're like, and they're like, how how close? I'm like, no, no, he's he's far as hell, but he's coming. <laughs> and sure enough, this thing swam fucking a mile and fucking hit, you know, ate the teaser and pitch some i mean it's like i i never forget that i was like gosh damn that thing came from a long way away yeah (laughs) that's pretty cool and then you mark them on the sonar and you miss them by like 60 feet and you don't get a bite yeah Yeah. Yeah. i mean what uh say say again sorry go go ahead go ahead michael i just i i I realize how much fish you drive over that don't bite 
Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the first time I noticed. I, I thought they would, they would take more chances at an opportunity, you know. But sometimes you mark a lot of them and they just don't show. And I, that, that, that was crazy. I definitely learned in the DR, man, like the time of day or the whatever the tide was doing, like when the tide would... They said the tide would get when the tide would get going or whatever the current would get going, but there was definitely something where like, you know, you could mark these fish for like an hour, and then like I would get frustrated and leave the fat, and then I'd come back, and then I'd get I'd get crushed, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Some days you're you mark the hell out of them and you barely see them, you know. Mark yeah. 30, 40 fish and see three to five fish, you know. No, that's that was, that was a that, frustrating. That was... Yeah, that was happening in Saint Lucia as well. Were you, were you leading up to that that week in last the week in I guess early December? Were you having were you marking all the all those fish like in the previous trips or or not really? No, not so many. Uh, definitely marking fish, but um, not so tight up on the fad. Um, a lot of uh, you would drive a mile off the fad and you would mark a pair or you would mark three. And for some reason, you would get better bites out of those. I don't know what it was, but when you see a, a group of fish far away from the fad, if you see two or three, you're going to get shots on all of them. Yeah. Uh, a pile of fish right next, to, right up tight to the rope next to all the bait. You know, sometimes you pass over three or four and they don't take you on at all. No. You know, you, yeah. You kind of try to find some fish kind of away from the, uh, away I, from the bait a bit. Yeah. I find uh, I, I found that to be pretty true in the DR, didn't you, Nick? I mean, I I did more Casa de Campo than the Macau fishing, but I mean, I found that to be if they were tied up on the fad, like, and there was a lot of bait there, you you weren't automatically going to get a bite. It was it was yeah. more like a fifty fifty thing. Whereas, like, if you were off of it a mile or in between them, and you you pinged one and you went over, and you were you were getting a bite. Yeah, I don't know. Definitely changes for sure. I mean, I remember yeah. some days putting the putting the fad under the rigger. And, you know, by watching that pop up in the spread too, you know, so it's just random. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've definitely ha- had to get close to them before to get, to I get, mean, like where you like bite. mark, cause like the rope marks like a fish sometimes. Yeah. And then you mark one and you're like, Damn, it marks it exactly like a-, like a fish. Well, sometimes you mark the <laughs> rope and then you mark the fish just like the rope. And then you're like, nah, that's gotta be a fish on the rope. And then sure yeah. enough, you fucking run the fat over and then boom, he pops up, you know, or you run the fat <laughs> over and you just run it, run the fat yeah. over and get it in your wheel. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how, how rough the water is, it really is a challenge, especially I, I guess with all the sea keeper. I, I'm sure sea keeper will help a lot, you know, with, yeah. with, the, with the rock of the boat, you would see the screen blank off on one side. I felt like in, in rough conditions here, or even in the DR, like I would just ignore it till I got up sea and then I turned down sea to where I, where I wanted to, you know, I'd get up far enough and I'd, I would just ignore it and then look around on the surface and then when i turned down see i'd i'd really focus on the sonar and then you know i'd use it use the time going up to to be like man maybe i should be over here or over there and then when i turn on the sonar like uh, then i turn that. down see and, and i'm looking at the sonar a lot more you know yeah uh, it also changed a lot in things sometimes you mark them really good going up ski and then sometimes really good down see it always changed for whatever reason i don't know you know it, Sometimes you think, well, all right, I'm definitely picking them up better going up on it, and then the next day you're picking them up better going down. I don't, I don't know what, I don't know what changes, or I, I'm not sure. Maybe you guys, you guys will know better than me, and or you've been using it a bit longer. No, I just think that I don't know. When you see them, you see them. I, I don't yeah. think that I'd yeah. like. To, I don't know. I'm sure there's some t- scientific reason to do it, but I can't. I can't put <laughs> two and two together. You know. All right. Sure. So, well, cool, cool, man. That's fucking badass. Yeah, that's really cool. Cool fishing, Michael. Seems yeah. like you, you got a really badass program there. One of the, yeah. I guess, the top level program in the area, or no, the, only, the only program in the area for what you said. <laughs> Tell yeah. us. Uh, I appreciate that one. I would assume you guys got to be inspiring some other guys to start doing it. Oh, for sure. There are some boats that are, that are definitely interested in fishing, and they don't really target build fish so much like what we do. I mean, they would go out fishing a lot, but they would go. Jigging or deep drop fishing, wow fishing, tuna fishing. Yeah. You know, they would do a bit of everything. Where, um, where the owner, Magic Lady, all he all he wants to do is is target blue marlin. You know, how did he get into fishing? Just into that sort uh, of fishing? Yeah, he's, he's actually fishing a lot longer than me. He had a great captain before. Uh, that's a good question. He 
his dad used to fish these same tournaments, I'm guessing, with his dad is how he started. And he was involved a lot in sports. He, he was a great, great uh, cricketer and played basketball and always liked sports. And when he got a bit older where he, he couldn't keep up with the sports, he's like, what is the next best thing I could do and, yeah. and still be able to compete? And fishing was one of uh, fishing is what it is. That's yeah. awesome. How old is he? Sure. Uh, 63. Nice. He's 63 with two re- um, rebuilt knees from all his sports he played. And I mean, he's a great angler. Yeah. And he's fucking mad at him. Oh, correct. He's, mm. he's, he's really good. That's awesome. Well, awesome, man. Well, hopefully, uh, you know, we'll, you know, maybe we'll, we'll get another pod going soon when uh, you have some other epic fishing in the next few months or something, you know? Yeah. Uh, okay. Hopefully, I'd, I'd love to hear more, uh, some more good stories and maybe some new areas that you, uncharted waters you fish. Oh, for sure. Uh, we can definitely keep in touch. I'll let you guys know what's, what, what's going on. Sounds good, man. Cool. Well, thank you, Michael. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me. Yes, sir. Thank you.